Okay, guys, are you there? We are going to do a live session on wet ARMD because it's still pending. We did a dry ARMD completely. Wet ARMD, we are about to start. Okay. So as you already know, dry ARMD is the most common form of ARMD, is the most common type and it is characterized by Drusen, whereas the wet ARMD, yeah, good evening uh, Ragwa. So wet ARMD is characterized by the presence of choroidal neovascular membrane, okay, CNVM. So all that you need to know in wet ARMD or what we call as neovascular ARMD is about this CNVM, okay, choroidal neovascular membrane. So first we'll see what is this CNVM. It, as you know, it is a hallmark of neovascular ARMD. Now does it occur only in ARMD? No, it happens elsewhere also. I'll talk about it. Good evening, Sharfraz. So, um, so you just started with wet ARMD. We are talking about CNVM. So, what is CNVM? You know, it is a new vessel. So, where is it arising from? Commonly, it arises from choriocapillaries. Where is choriocapillaries? Just behind the Brooks membrane. So, it penetrates through the um, Brooks membrane and then it grows into the area just beneath the RPE okay so this is a typical uh, CNBM that is described okay so typically the location of CNBM is sub RPE that means between the RPE and the Brooks okay so that is CNBM however the earliest histopathological change hi Anas histopathologically what do you find in CNBM you will see vessels within the Brooks membrane, small new vessels within the Brooks membrane. If you remember Drusen, Drusen was the earliest clinical finding of dry ARMD and of course the whole of ARMD. But when you talked about the earliest clinic histopathological change, it was thickened Brooks membrane. So there was something wrong with the Brooks. So here again, in neovascular ARMD, there is something wrong in the Brooks. So these new vessels are within the Brooks and eventually they break the Brooks and enter into the sub RPE area. So they're between the A RPE and the Brooks. Is that clear? Okay. So now a patient with CNBM, neovascular ARMD, how will he present with? He will present with a sudden painless decrease in vision. Okay. He'll pain, uh, present with a sudden painless decrease in vision and also metamorphopsia. Okay. And also metamorphopsia. If you remember, hi Noor. Okay. So if you remember, uh, in dry ARMD, the Drusen per se does not result in a decrease in vision, if you remember. What you will have in Drusen was more of, you know, uh, you might have metamorphopsia, you might have an uh, impaired, what we call as uh, impaired contrast sensitivity, you can have glare during daylight, all that you can have. Whereas CNVM causes a sudden and progressive decrease in vision. Now, why does all this happen? So, when you see clinically, yeah. So very often it's a clinical diagnosis. So what do we see? We see intraretinal fluid. So we see fluid or blood or neovascular tissue or a scar. Okay. So you can see fluid subretinally or you can see fluid intraretinally or you can see blood. Okay. Or you can see blood that is hemorrhage. So again, you can see subretinal hemorrhage or sub RPE hemorrhage or you can have lipid exudates, okay, you can have lipid exudates, or you can have a plaque or a membrane like formation, okay, on at the macular area, or eventually, there can be a scar, what we call as a form scar at the macula, okay, so what are the clinical findings, how does CNVM uh, manifest clinically what are the clinical findings that you will see on retinal examination you can see fluid where can you see fluid you can see fluid in the sub RPE area or sub retinal area or intra retinal similarly hemorrhage in these three areas or lipid dep lipid deposits or as I said you can have a membrane or um, like you know like a plaque or eventually a Disky form fibrovascular scar. Okay, so these are the various clinical findings. Now, what are the types of CNVM? See, the types of CNVM 
based on anatomical location you can classify or based on your FFA finding fundus fluorescein angiography you can classify or based on ICG indocyanin green angiography hi everyone all those who join later hi Dipanshu good evening oh yes so I, I see Sam yes Sam has been a regular Praveen hi Shri good evening Noor Aslam nice love from India to Pakistan okay Ella Unaru Bagun what is it? Ba Shala Bagu something. Okay, I forgot. Now let's come back to academics. So the classification, as I said, anatomical. So we call it as type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 is a typical that I said. It starts from the choreocapillaries and grows into the area between the brooks and the RPE. That means it is sub-RPE. Okay, sub-RPE. That is type 1. Type 2 is when it is in the subretinal space okay when it is a subretinal space that means it is between the rpe and the neurosensory retina that is type 2 all right now type 3 is something that is growing within the retina you remember the deep capillary plexus i already taught you uh, in the insta session okay so there are four capillary plexuses and one among them is uh, i mean two among them are in the deep capillary one at the inner border of the opl uh, i'm sorry inner border of the inl and one at the outer border of the inl yes so it arises from the deep capillary plexus and grows towards the rpe so that is intraretinal okay so we have three types but usually it's a type um one okay it's usually a type one so this is based on the anatomical location all right now coming to the classification based on ffa when you do a fundus fluorescein angiography there are two typical types that is what is usually asked in your exam and it has been previously asked also what we call as classic and occult classic means you'll see like you know a lacy lace you've seen lace no lace like that fine network of vessels you will see on the macula they are very well defined okay lacy pattern when you look at ffa lacy pattern that means it is a classic cnvm that we are talking about is that clear okay so you have uh, it's well defined so it's going to be hyper intense hyper fluorescent and it will increase as the time of the angiography as we keep following it do you understand so there is hyper fluorescent which keeps increasing so that means it's leaking okay it's leaking through the it starts early phase and it leaks through the late phases okay so that is classic now what is occult occult means hidden that means i'm not really able to pinpoint where exactly it is i do see some leakage but i'm not able to define it properly it's very speckled appearance like dot 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 no stippled appearance okay like that not like lace lace is like you know with, oh, like that you get it whereas this occult it's speckled dot 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 and you're not able to pinpoint where exactly it's leaking from and that's more in the late it doesn't start in the early early phase it's more dark the ffa looks darker and in the late phases it is suddenly you see like the leak coming so that is occult so for occult um kind of cnbm what is the investigation of choice because ffa i'm not really getting an idea so obviously it is a cnbm choroidal so for occult it would be cn icg angiography would be the investigation of choice okay so these are the two types on ffa that is classic which has a lacy pattern and the occult which has more of a stippled appearance and it's ill-defined all right okay so this is ffa now when you talk about icg angiography icg angiography you have some focal hot spots and then you have a characteristic pattern and a combination okay right so this is icg but you should remember this lacy pattern and occult on ffa is that clear now what are the other findings that you will have in neovascular ARMD one is CNPM which is a hallmark you can also have PED what is PED pigment epithelial detachment that is you have the Brooks and you have the RPE so this RPE will separate from the Brooks that is called pigment epithelial detachment okay it's important why it's important because what is within that area so you can have some fibrovascular you know um some growth within that PED 
when we call it fibrovascular PED. Okay, FVPED, fibrovascular PED. Or number two, you can have blood within it, which we call as hemorrhagic PED. Or you can have just plain fluid, serous PED. Or it can have that, you know, that drusenoid material, that waxy material, you can have drusenoid material. So you can have four types of PED. So one is CNVM, a finding in neovascular ARMD, which is a hallmark, and you can also have PED. So PED, you can have fibrovascular elements or hemorrhagic PED, or you can have serous PED, or you can have a uh, drusenoid PED. Is that clear? So these are the clinical findings of wet ARMD. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, guys. So far, so good. Okay. Now coming to the treatment. Treatment of choice now is intravitreal anti-VEGF. Okay. Intravitreal anti-VEGF only because you can see it's all neovascular vessel uh, neovascularization. So we give intravitreal anti-VEGFs and you know about anti-VEGFs. So tomorrow we will talk about the intravitreal anti-VEGFs and we'll do a fundus walk also tomorrow. So today get all your concepts correct. Okay. So we also used to do laser photocoagulation, but that is almost given up now. And um, what's the other thing? This photodynamic therapy. Yeah, photodynamic therapy can be done, but now because we have this nice intravitreal wedges which give a beautiful um, results, don't really do photodynamic therapy. But you should know about PDT. In PDT, we use a a dye called as vertiporfin. Okay, V E R T P O R F I N. Vertiporfin. So you inject it intravenously before doing the laser procedure. Okay, so you inject before and then you fire the laser on the macula. Okay, so when you do that, what happens? The new vessels which already have an affinity for this vertiporfin and have selectively absorbed the vertiporfin will absorb the laser and there will be a photochemical reaction, what we call as photothrombosis. So what is a photochemical reaction? There's going to be um, production of re reactive oxygen species, the singlet oxygen. And you know that is going to cause an endothelial injury. So endothelial injury, one of the virtuous triad components. So you're going to have thrombosis. So thrombosis is going to occlude the vessels. So they will die of starvation eventually. You know, it's like... Oh, I block, I choke myself with a thrombus and I don't get further nutrients and blood. So that is the mechanism of photodynamic therapy. What is the other name for photodynamic therapy? We call it as cold laser because we're not really heating the tissue here. Because otherwise, if you remember, when we're using the laser on the retina, we always do a photocoagulation. Coagulation is you're heating up the tissue to almost 70 to Okay, we are raising it to 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. So that is a thermal laser otherwise. Yeah, argon green and all that. So this is also called as cold laser. Once there was a question where they asked, what is the change in the color after you apply PDT on the retina? Nothing. There will be no change in color unlike your normal routine laser. Routine laser photocoagulation after you apply, there's going to be a blanching. You know, it will be grayish or uh, normally we leave it as grayish white color. So the normal color, the retina is transparent, right? So you see the choroidal orange red. Now when you apply the usual lasers, it will will stop when it turns gray white what we call as blanching but PDT no there will be no change in color ma'am then how will we know the end point it's just about you know the timing how much energy we are delivering so there's a standard protocol so we just do that and wait for the regression all right so this is about uh, wet ARMD management and dry ARMD management I think I've already told you um, the antioxidants so good evening Saurabh um, Okay, yes. What are the differential diagnosis of CNVM? Choroidal neovascular membrane, is it present only in ARMD? No. So I'll give you a mnemonic for that. Uh, okay, I'll just tell you that's a little secret, a kind of open secret in certain forums. I have a very good senior and a best friend who still calls me. I'm an impish chimp. Okay, I'm like a chimpanzee running around and jumping around. So we leave the imp part, the devilish part, we'll take only the chimp. Okay, I am a chimp, a chimp. So A. Hmm? A, already you know ARMD. Which ARMD? The neovascular ARMD. Another A is angioid streaks. Angioid streaks per se is an MCQ. Angioid streaks are ruptures of Brooks membrane. So already there is a rupture in the Brooks membrane. The anatomy is altered. So, you know, chorea capillaries can grow into the sub-RPE space. And what is the most common cause of angioid streaks? 
pseudoxanthoma elasticum you remember that orange wala video i did once on insta yeah so please remember that so two a's we have a uh, now we have chimp so what is a chimp c choroidal rupture how choroid will rupture some tennis ball somebody hit me like this so in that case uh, there can be a blunt trauma resulting in posterior wall choroidal rupture so c h histoplasmosis what we call as presumed ocular histoplasmosis syndrome forget all that histoplasmosis chimp me you know c you know h what is i idiopathic nobody knows why okay idiopathic m what is m myopia pathological myopia when your eyeball is really really huge you know the retina is thinned out and you know you have ruptures what is that rupture of brooks membrane called lacquer cracks so when a patient has lacquer cracks they have an increased risk of developing cnvm that is a pathological myope which is axial length 26 mm or more if they have lacquer cracks they have an increased risk of developing cnvm so a over 2 is c h i m p photocoagulation so if photocoagulation has been done with you know lot of energy we put a lot the burns are very intense so eventually what will happen you all know eventually any laser burn is going to cause a corio retinal scar but now you put a high energy burn it's just like you know ironing pressing you give adequate uh, heat yes it will all smoothen out but if you're going to give more burn it's going to cause a hole so something of that sort so when i do a high energy burn high thermal burns uh, for any other like for diabetic retinopathy or crvo we are doing pan retinal photocoagulation or sc scatter laser photocoagulation so at that time when we give a high energy burn what happens is the brooks membrane will be damaged and we can have cnvm is that clear so differential diagnosis of cnvm is important so remember i am the monkey i am which monkey i am the chimpanzee okay a a chimp a chimp so a a two a's come again repeat with me yes what are the two a's one a armd that is neovascular armd or wet armd another a angioid streaks c choroidal trauma a choroidal rupture c very good very good tanvi very good raghavan c choroidal rupture due to blunt trauma typically yes angioid streaks good tanvi very good raghavan histoplasmosis h i idiopathic very good m yes good pujita good pavitra histoplasmosis m myopia that especially the pathological myopia and p very good priyadarshini okay what is p the last p photocoagulation excellent okay so this is what is important so this is about cnvm and uh, the wet or neovascular armd so you should know what is neovas what is the hallmark of wet armd how does it present what are the clinical features when you see the findings it will be cnvm and ped what are the types of cnvm you should know anatomical types ffa based icg based and then what are the types of ped you need to know and then what else uh what else did we talk about we talked about the management of uh, cnvm then we talked about pdt in particular then we talked about the differential diagnosis of cnvm is that clear okay so i will share a, a short flash card of this on my facebook group on my telegram and on insta okay so insta i am i mentor e y e m e n t o r underscore rajaratna okay and no doctor dot rajaratna and then insta i am there facebook and there so i'll put up the flash card for you so, okay so i hope this session was useful for you guys very very high yield okay. all right see you bye good night